Corinthians 15. We'll look here to verse of scripture here tonight. Here in 1 Corinthians chapter number 6, 15. And uh, I want to show you something here in the Bible. One verse of scripture. And I want you to look at this tonight. This will be a good truth for you. We settle down in here in the Bible on Sunday nights like this and you'll get something that'll help you this week if you'll listen. If you sit there and think, Oh man, when's this going to be over with? I want to go watch the ball game or I want to go get something to eat. Or you ain't going to get nothing and you're making yourself miserable. You might as well get it tonight. So listen, 1 Corinthians 15 and look at verse way on up there in the verse, number 19. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 19. Everybody knows this verse, but I want to give you a thought out of it tonight. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable, miserable. I want to preach tonight on the subject, five miserable men. Miserable. Just listen to that word, miserable. You ever anybody say, I'm miserable? Have you ever been miserable? Man, it's miserable to be miserable. I I hate it. it's, It's awful when you're miserable. Just the sound of that word. That's an old slimy, awful sounding word, miserable. It's M-I-S-E-R, like miser. You reckon that miser is any kin to miserable? Miser, like somebody that just wants stuff and hoards stuff up? Yeah, I believe it is. Miserable, miserable. The Bible talks about men being miserable. The word miserable means unhappy, uncomfortable, unfortunate, miserable. And I know people in America tonight that have nice houses and nice cars and nice clothes and nice looks and health and everything but are miserable. Miserable. I don't want to be miserable. I want to have joy in my life. And I found out how to do it. Five miserable men. I'm going to show you these in the Bible. You don't have to turn to it. It's going to be real quick. You'll be surprised how fast this is going to go if you'll listen. Number one, the man is miserable who is dominated by self. Who is dominated by self. We are living in a time when people are addicted to pleasing themselves. Matter of fact, people are even taught, you do what's best for you. You do what you want. It's time you live for yourself. A lady called me one day, then several years ago. She said, Brother Danny, she said, uh, she said I'm leaving my husband. And I said, uh, why? She said, I've been miserable for a long time. She said, it's time I quit thinking about everybody else and started thinking about myself. I said, uh, you've been going to some kind of class, college, and, or you've been hanging around, you've been watching some, I said, you've been infected with the wrong kind of belief. You've been infected with false doctrine. If you think running out on your family is going to make you happy, you're you're crazy. It ain't going to happen. She said, it's time that I started living for myself. I said, you think you're miserable now? You don't know what miserable is until you get out there. And she did it. She did it. She didn't take my advice and she left her husband and found her another fella and married him right off the bat like that and I talked to her once in a while. She'll call me and I say, well, how's things going? She said, well, I tell you, she said, me and him gets along good and everything, but she said, I'd give anything in the world if I'd have just stayed back home. She said, I wish I'd have never done what I'd done. That's a testimony, people. That's a rare admission. Most people won't admit it, but she will. And you know what she realized? That you're miserable miserable when you live for yourself. If you only live for yourself. If you get up every morning and think well the only reason I'm going to work today is because I'm getting paid Friday and when I get paid Friday I'm doing all this stuff for myself. It's me, 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 me. We, we, this is the most selfish generation I believe this world has ever seen. That's why, that's why people can't get along in their marriage. If some of you people get divorced from yourself you might could get along with your mate. You know that? That's right. That, that's what's wrong with a lot of people. They're, they're in love with their self. Self is flesh 
flesh. Hey, heard about? That. Let me show you the attitude we have now. And if you work with kids, you'll see this. It's it's in you adults too, though. Teacher took these kids on a field trip, and she took all her kids on this field trip, and she took them to a, a farm, you know, and showed them things and everything. And she said, "Now here's the cows, and here's the chickens, and here's here's the barns, and here's the way they milk them, and here's the way." Done that about two hours, and asked this little girl. She said, "Now, honey, do y'all have any questions?" And that little girl said, "Did you see my new coat? Did you see my new coat?" You get that? If you ever work with kids, you know what that means. That kid never noticed them cows. It never noticed them chickens. It said, do you see my new coat? And that's what's wrong with our generation. The whole world can go to hell. The, the buses don't have to run. We don't have to support a missionary. We don't care about church on Sunday. Did you see, have I got this? Did you see my four-wheeler? Did I get to go to this ball game? Did I get to go here? Did I get that? Listen, you are miserable tonight when you are living for yourself. Say amen right there. A man that is dominated by self is a miserable man. Listen, you know what you need to do? You need to every day of your life Make yourself do something that you don't want to do. Make yourself crucify your flesh. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. I'm telling you, get up every morning and you say, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to go in here and pray for a while. Dear Lord, help missionaries and God help them. And God help. Listen, you don't want to do it? Throw an extra $20 in that offering plate. You don't want to do it? Go over there and witness to that person at work. You will never be happy if you are are dominated by yourself. That's right. Hey man, it's the flesh. It's the flesh. You're like them two little boys that said they was riding one of them, trying to, both of them was trying to ride one of them little horses at Walmart and it's on their, like this and they couldn't, he said, if, he, said uh, he said, if one of us get off of here, I could ride this thing better. <laughs> Amen. That's us. That's human. That's, that's the flesh. Amen. That's the flesh. One of us got off here, I could ride better. Yeah, you get off. Uh, the, the flesh is me first, you next. That's human nature. And brother, we need to make up our mind. We're, we don't want to live like that. You know, when people, uh, you, know, you go to a counselor and they tell you to be yourself, that's the worst advice you can give some people. Just be yourself. No, don't. <laughs> amen. Uh, listen, amen. Uh, you're awful. You're awful. I'm telling you something, brother. Listen, we need to understand that. We need to understand tonight that the flesh, it, it, you're dominated by the self. Number two, let me show you the second miserable man. The second man that's miserable is the man that's deceived by Satan. Deceived by Satan. Uh, de deceived as to the way of salvation. Uh, your Bible is to show us uh, the way of salvation. Uh, somebody said this. Somebody said, oh, Jesus was such a wonderful teacher, and I'm so glad he came to show us how to live. They're deceived. Jesus didn't come to this earth to show us how to live. He didn't come to this earth to show us how to live. Now we ought to try to Im imitate or, or we ought to try to follow his example. We ought to try to follow his instruction but that is not why Jesus come. You know what that Bible said? The Bible said the Lord that Christ is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus came into this world to save sinners. He did not come down here to say, all right, you live like I live and I'll see you in heaven one of these days. That ain't why he come. And a lot of churches think that. You'd be surprised at the churches tonight who think, well, if I try to live like he lived, I'll go to heaven when I die. No, you won't. Number one, you ain't gonna live like he did. And two, the best you can do still winds you up in hell. If you could live good enough to get to heaven, he would have just lived a good life and then went shot up to heaven and never died. You know why he died? Because me and you can't live right. People are deceived to the way of salvation. These religious people, they ain't near as good as some of you people think they are. You know that Pope comes out there, boy, and he's got that white dress on and he got that grapefruit on his head and he'll come out there, you know, and he comes out, boy, he looks holy. But don't you doubt it one bit. He made out of the same old stinking stuff me and you made out of. I, it's hard to believe, but it's the truth. Oh, Mother Teresa, same old rotten flesh me and you've got. I've heard people say, well, if anybody ever lived it, Grandma did. I hate to tell you this, but Grandma didn't. Uh, she had her sin covered up pretty good, but old Grandma had her sin. That book said all have sinned 
come short of the glory of God. That book said there's none righteous, no, not one. The infallible 1611 King James Bible said there's none righteous, no, not one. And Jesus did not come to show us how to live. He came to save our sorry hides and take us to heaven because there ain't no way there ain't none of us can live good enough to get to heaven. You're deceived by Satan. You ever seen a praying mantis? How many of y'all know what a praying mantis is? M-A-N-T-I-S, praying mantis. They're, they're the, they look like an alien, one of them alien kids. Uh, they, they, and and they're, they're a little thing, you'll be able to see them on the side of something like that, and they got big old arms like this right here, and they just stand like that, and they look like they're praying. And I've heard people say, oh, don't, don't kill it, it's a praying mantis, don't kill it. But I'm gonna tell you something. Them things are deceitful. They're wicked. It was ungodly things. They're mean. They, I read a, book, a story about them and it said they have the personality of a tiger and a cannibal. Them little praying hands, a nice little bug will come by and mind its own business and they'll go and eat it just like that. They're mean. Don't be deceived by their little praying hands. A little bug come by and said, oh, a nice, he's praying for, <laughs> he's down their throat, man. I mean, he's gone down the hatch uh, before he even realizes it. I mean, and boy, I read that and I thought, I always thought praying man, this is, I'm gonna stomp the next one I see. I, amen. I hope they become extinct. And, and I, listen, brother, listen, them little, them little hypocrites out there, and boy, I, I, all kinds of sermons started rolling around in my head. I thought, oh, Lord, is that, ever, is that ever right? I know so many people, every time you see them, it's just, and as soon as you turn your back, ah, they got their fangs in you, man. I mean, they're squirting their venom in you like that. They're deceived by Satan. I'm gonna tell you, a miserable man is a man who is deceived by Satan. It's like this guy, he said this guy was walking down the road one day and there's a poor blind man. So arms for the blind, arms for the blind, like this. And he had on, on dark glasses and, and he's standing there, you know, with one of them little tapper things like that. He didn't have a dog. He couldn't afford one of them dogs. And he, so he just have a, a, a tapper. Like that one blind man, they said, said this blind man came in a store one day. And he had this dog, like, had his dog like that. And he come walking around like that. And he grabbed the dog by the tail and just started slinging it around, around, around. And the guy said, may I help you, sir? He said, no, I'm just looking around. Uh, but, but anyway, uh, this guy was standing there. This guy was standing there like that for you blondes. We ain't got time to fool with you. Uh, we gotta go. He said, uh, he was standing there like this. And he was going like that. And he had this thing and the guy put some money in it, put, put a quarter in, in his bucket. He said, thank you, sir, like that. And the guy walked on down the street like that and he just happened to turn around like that and he saw that guy take up his glasses and look at that quarter and see what it was and put it down in there. He turned around and he said, hey, man, you ain't blind. You, what are you doing today? He said, I never said I was blind. He said, well, how are you out here taking people money? He said, I'm just standing in for the blind man today. I'm not really blind. I'm doing his job. He's off today. He said, oh, okay, where's he at? He said, he's gone to movies. <laughs> uh, you know, that's what he's, he's deceived, brother. He's deceived. And the whole world's like that. The whole world out there is deceived. It's deceitful. And I'm going to tell you, the man is miserable who is deceived by Satan. That's right, brother. There's, there's this fellow, they said uh, uh, years ago, back in the 1930s, he worked for the railroad. And he worked for the railroad and he, and he, and he, he claimed he got hurt, but he really didn't. He claimed that he fell off one of them railroad cars and it, and it paralyzed his legs and he couldn't walk. And that's what he claimed. And he got him a lawyer and sued him for $100,000. And said, and this is back in 1934. That was like be like 10 million now. And uh, he sued him for $100,000. And, and so they was trying to figure out if he was legitimate. And he's laying around there saying, my legs are paralyzed, can't walk. You know, they're like, so these two detectives got on the case. And they said, well, we'll figure out if this guy's for real. So these detectives disguised themselves and moved out in the community. And they opened up this little place. They sat in there and they said, we're going to do, we're going to do, uh, uh, palm reading stuff where they read your palm tell you fortune look in crystal balls and stuff and they advertise it we can help tell you your future and everything so I got that guy's attention he went over there and he said yeah man I like to have my palm read tell, look in the crystal ball and they looked in the crystal ball and they said yes sir yes sir we see we see a, a lawsuit 
or something in your future. Something's going to bring you $100,000. We can't tell what it is, but you're He said, oh boy, oh boy. And he said, what I got to do? They said, all you got to do is grab that big log over there tonight and take that log across the railroad track. And he said, you hop over there on one foot and you hop over back on the other foot. He said, okay, I'll do it. He went out there saying, man, all I got to do is that what the fortune teller said and I got my $100,000. So he took his log that night and went out there and they were over here in the bushes filming and him like this, you know, and he hopped, hopped across that railroad track like that, and then he come like, back on the other way like that, you know. They had it all on film, and of course, he didn't get anything. You know what? He was trying to deceive the, 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 the system, and they deceived him, and he wound up being, you know what that's a picture of? Deceived and being deceived. The Bible said in the last day, they'll be deceived and being deceived. While the world's deceiving people, they're being deceived. It's like rock singers. You kids know rock singers? You know a lot of them rock singers think that the devil is going to give them a special place to reign in hell? I've got rock pictures of rock albums where they say, we're going to serve Satan. Y'all, I catch you up. Right, we're going to serve Satan and we're going to reign in hell. Them idiots. Right, they get down there and they think on the back of their album it says, we're going to reign in hell. And you know what they think? They think if we deceive all these kids and take them to hell, when we get to hell, me and the devil's going to be cool. We're going to run the place. But alas, what they don't realize is when they get to hell, they're going to be down there burning just like everybody else. While they was deceiving people, the devil was deceiving them. I'm going to tell you tonight, the devil don't play fair. You get out here in the world messing around, it'll burn you a blister. It'll take everything you've got. You are deceived by Satan and you'll wind up being miserable. Say amen right there right number three the man that is defeated by sin is a miserable man you lose your vision Samson is a perfect example of a man being defeated by sin Samson the strong man strong man and Samson was defeated by sin boy old Samson you kid, you mamas ought to tell your kids the story of Samson brother they'd chain him up and they'd lock him up to a gate or something. So that old boy get up, he'd pick up the gate and walk off with it. I mean, he, he, killed, he killed a thousand men with a jawbone of an ass like that. I mean, just plow, smote them hip and thigh is what the Bible said. Not, I mean, can you imagine a thousand people like we had over at the youth rally and me just take an old jawbone and I mean, just go down like a pow, 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 pow. You talk about an action movie. You talk about Superman and Spider-Man and all that. Listen, they couldn't hold a line. They're just pictures of Samson. They're just little copycats of old Samson. I mean, that old boy, that old boy had, had the world by the tail, man. And you know what he done? He fooled around and got his hair cut in the wrong barber shop. And he messed around with that old woman, Delilah. And boy, she got there. And Delilah was in cahoots with his enemies. And you boys don't never fall in love with a woman that's in good friends with your enemy. Y'all are... You're either listening real good or you're just backslid. Uh, I hope it's the first one. Uh, say amen when I say something like that. Listen, don't never marry a woman that likes your enemies. Amen. Thank you, Met fellers. If she's in cahoots with your enemies, it, see, here's the way it went. The, 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 uh, her kinfolk come around and said, we got to find out. What's his, what's his, how's he, how's he stay so strong all the time? How's he stay so strong? She said, let me handle this. So she's sitting there and she's all perfumed up and prettied up. Samson comes in and she says, Hiya, Sammy. I don't know how to do like a girl does. I mean, it's wicked as hell, just like that right there. Hi, Sammy. You had a neck massage lately? No, I ain't. I'm burning up. Why are you so nice? She said, Because I love you so much and I've been thinking about you. He says, wow. She says, lay your head down right here and take you a nap. Wow. Is it my birthday or something? No, just lay your head down here, honey. Man, you sure got some pretty long hair. Sort of look like a horse. But she's going like this. And she says, Sammy. He said, what? Do you love me? He said, I know what you're wanting now, my credit card, right? You better watch, when they're coming up nice to you like that, they're reaching around and got their hand in your pocket wanting that billfold, fella. Say, man, said, amen right there. That's not true. 
It's not true. She said it is. Ain't true. He says it is true. Is it true, preacher? There's a preacher. Right there. It's not true. Oh, she keeps the credit card all the time anyway. <laughs> Give it to her. And she, you keep it and she'll be nice to you once in a while. Uh, well, anyway, you know how the story goes. You know how the story goes. Well, anyway, she said, I sure wish you'd tell me how come you're so strong. He said, God don't want me to do that. Watch out for him. Watch out for him. You girls better watch out for a boy that don't want you to do what God wants you to do. She should have said, well, that's fine, honey. If God don't want you to do it, that's fine. But she was hooked up with his enemies. And she said, come on, Sam. Please. Will you tell me how come you're so strong? He said, God don't want me to do that. Ah, come on. And he, he made up stuff for a time or two, you know. I put some new ropes on me, and, and I'll be like anybody else. You know, the Lord warned that nut two or three times. Ain't it? You remember that? He, Samson had a chance to, to figure out what was going on, and he was too blind to see it. And, uh, and so she wrapped him new, new ropes around him, everything, and she's all right. Come on in, boys. Come on in. They come in there, you know, and they had on rope, ropes and chains, and they was going to get Samson. And she said, the Philistines be upon thee, Sammy. And boy, he jumped up and went, boop, popped them muscles like that right there and broke them rope with pow, 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 and knocked every one of them guys out and they all left and it wasn't just there too. She said, you want to take a nap right here? The idiot forgot two days ago. Well, I tell you, that shows how dumb men are when it comes to a woman. Ain't that right? That's pitiful. You know what the Bible said? Many strong men have been slain by her. No wicked woman can. Amen. Some of you pitiful males sitting in here tonight. Well, anyway, story went. You know how it went. She finally got him to tell her he said, I ain't never had a haircut. So she said, you just go to sleep right here. Go to sleep, 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 sleep. <laughs> so finally he went out. She reached and got her scissors and started whacking that stuff off. I'll tell you right there. And she went, let's go, boys. Come on, this is it. They said, now listen, we're getting tired. He knocked our brains out the last two times. Let's go, get in here. So they all come in there. The foolish things be upon thee, Sammy. And he jumped up and he said, am I going to have to do this again? And he goes like that and he goes, huh? and one of them grabbed his arm. And he goes, and one of them grabbed his other arm. And he didn't even realize the Lord had pulled back off of him. He was whisking off. He was defeated by sin. And you know what they done to Samson? They took him and put his eyes out. You know what got Samson in trouble? His eyes. You know what his sin cost him? His eyes. Ladies and gentlemen, you teenagers, I know that story's thousands of years old, but it's still true tonight. Sin will defeat you. There's people that ought to be sitting in these pews tonight that are saved as me and you, but they're defeated by sin. We got people that, that ought to be in this church that's in jail right now. They're defeated by sin. You think you can get out here and smoke pot and get drunk and party and stuff like that and you think, oh, I'm not, I'm going to tell you that Samson didn't realize that. So you say, well, how stupid. Couldn't he figure it out? Can't you figure it out? Can't you figure it out, boys? Can't y'all figure it out? You get out and sin, it'll defeat you. And I'm going to tell you something. The most miserable man in town, town's a man that's really saved and defeated by sin. He's more miserable than a lost man. More, most miserable man in town is a man that's saved and defeated by sin. You know what I've seen a lot of them do? Commit suicide or attempt suicide because in their heart they're saying, I'm saved, I need to be living right, I need to be living right, but their flesh wants to do wrong, do wrong, do wrong, do wrong, do wrong. And then you start thinking, I'll just kill myself, I'll just kill myself because that battle is so strong between the flesh and the spirit and you can't win the victory. You're so miserable, you can't sin and you're so wicked, you can't live right and you just think, I'll just kill myself, I'll just kill myself. And I know people, that, and I'm, I don't know nobody's soul, I mean, I, I'm not their judge, but I know a lot of people 
people that profess to love God and wound up taking an overdose of pills or taking a gun or sitting out in front of a car or ending their life because it was defeated by sin. You say, I don't believe that could happen. Samson lost his life. Samson committed suicide. man asked me one time, can you commit suicide and go to heaven? He did. He's in the Hall of Fame in Hebrews chapter 11. But you know what he done? He grabbed hold of them big things there and he said, Lord, let me die with a Philistine and pull them things down. He said, I can't live right. I messed up my life. He said, I got my eyes lost. I'm defeated. But his hair growed back a little bit and God gave him strength one more time and he pulled a building down on him and killed all them and took them out with him. He wound up somewhat of a hero but nothing like he could have been if he hadn't have been defeated by sin. That's why you need to come to this church. You're going to hear the Bible at this church. Plenty of it. More than some of you can swallow. Number three, four, right quick. You know who's miserable? is the man that doubts his salvation. I said the man that dominated by self, deceived by Satan, defeated by sin, Number four, the man that doubts his salvation. You know you're saved or you doubt it all the time. We know we're saved because of a change. We know we're saved because of our charity. We know we're saved because of our chastisement. Right quickly tonight, I won't take time on this. The most miserable man around here is the person, ever, have you ever been to a meeting? People are up shouting, screaming, crying, going to the altar, hugging necks, glory to God. Woo, hallelujah, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And you're sitting there thinking, man, I don't even know if I'm saved or not. That's a miserable shape to be in. I used to uh, uh, preach on Sunday morning. This girl, she came come down in the mountains, up around Spruce Pine, up in there somewhere. She'd just come to church about once every six months. And every time I'd preach, she'd come down to the altar and she'd just bawl and somebody'd pray with her. And she'd say, I just don't know if I'm saved or not, but I, I, I asked him this morning and I believe he did it. And she'd go out and you wouldn't see her no more for about six months. And she'd come back six months later and do the very same thing again. And every time she went, she doubted that much more. She kept saying, maybe I didn't say the right words. How do I know I really believe? How do I know I'm really saved? That's an awful shape to be in. I guarantee you there's people in here tonight, right now tonight, you struggle struggle with that all the time. Maybe I'm not really saved. Maybe I didn't say the right words. Maybe, And if the devil knows that'll work on you, he'll just grind it in. and grind. See, if the devil finds out you've got a weakness, he'll, grind, he'll drive you crazy with it. Now look here tonight. Look here. And girls usually have more trouble with this than, than men, female, because they're naturally more feeling oriented and emotional stuff. And so a lot of times a woman will doubt their salvation more, especially if you got saved when you was real little and no great change come over your life. And you'll start thinking, well, maybe I ain't even really saved. Maybe, I, maybe I'm not even really saved. And the devil gets you out here and you'll do a, something wrong and you'll think, maybe I'm not really saved. And then the devil will get you out here and say, if you was really saved, you'd have never done that. If everybody in the church knew how bad you was, they, you're, all, you're going to hell. You're going to hell. But I'm going to tell you something here tonight. We are saved. What does the Bible say we're saved by? We are saved by grace through faith. That not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. I'm saved tonight not because I'm a preacher. I'm saved tonight not because I, I can't go to church or carry a King James Bible. I'm saved tonight because there was a time when I was 18 years old, I trusted the Lord to save me. He said he would. By faith, I believe he did. And that's all I've got to go on. That's all you got to go on. You can't go by how you feel. You'll feel saved one day and not saved the next day. We need to take about an hour or sometime and deal with this. Because the more you doubt, then the more you doubt. And the more you try to get saved, the more you doubt again. I think you better just go back there and say, look, if I had to die right now, if I had to die right now, and it don't work like this, but they stand at the gate of heaven and say, all right, Danny Castle, why should we let you in here? What would I say? If your answer is, I've tried to live right, that's the wrong answer. If your, if your answer is, I joined the church and I've been baptized, that's the wrong answer. My answer would be tonight, if I had to die tonight and stand in front of the judgment bar of God and an angel stepped out and said, why would I let you in here, Danny? You know what I'd say? I'd bow my head, I wouldn't even look up. I'd bow my head and say, because Jesus Christ shed his blood for my sins and I trusted him. That's what I'd say. And I'm telling you, faithful, if that don't get you in, there ain't none of us going. 
If that right there ain't good enough, forget it. But thank God it's good enough. Amen. Amen. By faith, I believe. It's not by feelings. You say, well, I just don't feel safe. It ain't got nothing to do with your feelings. It's, it's, you're trusting the right one. Watch. I'm trusting this pulpit. I'm really trusting this pulpit. I would not do this in front of y'all because I bust my nose and bloody my nose. I am trusting this thing right here. Watch. Watch. I'd fall flat on my face. I'd fall flat on my face if I didn't trust this, this little bench to hold me up. That's what I do to Jesus. My soul is trusting Jesus Christ. It ain't got nothing to do with how I feel. I'm trusting him, and according to the King James Bible, I'm saved by his grace, and you are too if you've done that. Now forget it. Quit whining, quit worrying, start acting like you're saved. The man that doubts his salvation, the last man tonight is the man that's dead in sin. You know a person not saved, they're dead in trespass and sin. The Bible says she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. The Bible said you were dead. Now you're alive in Christ. Disobedient in works. Defiled in, in, your, in your finishing, in your, in your in your lifestyle. They said Aristotle quoted one time, even God can't change the past. But the truth is tonight he can forgive your past. D.L. Moody said one time, I can learn in three minutes what it took me 42 years and I couldn't learn. Number one, I can do nothing to save myself. Number two, God don't expect me to. Number three, Jesus did it all. He said, I can teach you more in three minutes than it took me 42 years to learn. Number one, I can't do anything to save myself. Number two, God don't expect me to. Number three, Jesus did it all for me. I'm going to tell you something tonight. Brother, y'all come on, Brother Jason. I'm going to tell you something tonight. If you get a hold of that and believe what I just said, it'd do you more Bill good than me giving you $1,000 tonight. If I gave you $1,000 tonight, wouldn't you feel, I've heard people say, ah, money don't, do. the truth is, it does make you feel good. I mean, it don't last long, but it feels good to get it, don't it? Let somebody give you $500 to see if you don't feel good. Ain't no use lying about it. But you know, if you get a hold tonight of what I just said, I can't do nothing to save myself. God don't expect me to. And Jesus, he's already done it for me. You could leave out of here tonight saying, Lord of God, I'm glad I went to church tonight. I'm ready to go to work tomorrow and face the world. I've got something to live for. I'm not going to be miserable. Let's stand by our head for prayer. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed.